Grenada welcomes Caribbean Airlines increased the flight schedule to ease intra-regional travel from end of November. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. Prepare for hurricane, prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries to waterproof flashlight candles. We'll do tin stuff, garbage bag, first aid kit. Come on people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family too. Prepare for hurricane, your hair prepare for hurricane. With the details to the news for Wednesday, November 23rd, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Caribbean Airlines has increased its flight schedule to daily service between Morris Bishop International Airport and Piaco International Trinidad, effective November 26th. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell welcomed the increased intra-regional flights, noting the extreme hardship in recent times to move freely between the islands. In speaking with the GIS, Prime Minister Mitchell says the return of a daily flight service between Grenada and Trinidad is a win for our islands, but also a win for the region. What it means is that uh, persons can at least travel um, easier uh, between Grenada and Trinidad. It means, in the case of Grenada, certainly um, increased opportunity for uh, tourists from Trinidad to come to Grenada. Trinidad has been the major source market for intra-regional travel. Uh, it also means, in the case of Grenadians who go to Trinidad for business um, or traffickers, for persons who um, have to travel sometimes even to get things like visas, as you're aware. Quite a number of embassies, for example, Canadian embassies in Trinidad. Um, it means at least there's a greater chance of being able to get to Trinidad. The increase in Caribbean Airlines flights to Grenada, he says, will now allow for greater interconnectivity between Grenada, Canada and the United States. It means you can fly from Grenada to Trinidad and then get the connecting flight to take you to um, some of the international destinations. So it certainly means um, an ease in the significant restrictions and challenges that we've had. Um, and again, um, from a trade point of view, um, we obviously need to beef up uh, regional trade and we can't do so if our people can't can't move so it's um, welcome news um, and at least a significant improvement and as we come to the end of the year um, a bit of a Christmas gift for for uh, citizens who need to travel advocacy will continue until there is adequate air transport throughout the region we just started this is really just scratching the surface I mean we are not anywhere close to where we were uh, 2019 and for that matter anywhere close to where we were um, in the heyday of what I would call regional travel as you recall, there was once upon a time when it cost $200 to get to Trinidad, and there were several flights, um, and, and not just Trinidad, but throughout the region. So we certainly need, the aim is to get back to that level of service, and, and hopefully, even if it isn't as cheap as $200, at least um, to airfares that are far more affordable and far more manageable. So the advocacy um, will only now begin. Um, so I'm starting by thanking Cal, but I'm also letting them know that I expect um, in the new year um, that we would have even more flights um, um, being put on, and that is just Trinidad. Grenada. We obviously need to do Grenada, St. Vincent, Barbados, uh, St. Lucia, the Northern Leeuwin Islands, and even further up to the Caribbean when we're looking at Puerto Rico, Cuba, um, places like Panama. I mean, this is all part of the Caribbean, and we have to be able to get to the point where we can travel um, quite easily. Uh, Guyana, Suriname, you know, so there's still a lot of work to be done. The Monday and Friday CAL service will depart in the evenings at 8.15 p.m., arriving at Piaco International at 8.55, offering connectivity to their Red Eye New York service. The Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday flight service departs MBIA at 11.20 a.m. and arrives in Port of Spain at 12 p.m., offering convenient connections to the Toronto flight service. The Grenada Schools Incorporated hands over its third library in St. David as it continues to establish functioning facilities to improve early literacy in all public primary schools. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell during the handover ceremony of the library at the St. Theresa's Catholic School on Wednesday said the aim is not just to outfit schools with libraries but to ensure all students can read and write. This is the 27th school to be outfitted with a library facility. As parliamentary representative for the constituency, Honorable Mitchell charged the staff and students to use the library to improve the school's literacy levels. 
the aim is not just to have libraries in all 52 primary schools, but the aim is to make sure that every boy and girl in Grenada would be able to read and would be able to write. And as the students so ably said this morning, if you are literate, if you can read, it will take you to the moon, to the stars, to the depths of the ocean, to anywhere you want to go. Please make good use of the library. Read. Your goal is to read all 1,000 books that are in the library. So even when you leave St. Teresa's, you can always come back and continue reading. So I want to say congratulations to Grenada Schools, Inc. for reaching its halfway mark. Congratulations to the principal staff and students, and do enjoy the library. The nonprofit organization started the Library and Literacy Drive in 2015 and has invested millions so far to renovate, construct, and furnish libraries. CEO Andrea Phillip says larger and more complex libraries will be undertaken in the second phase of the project as the organization seeks to successfully outfit all 52 primary schools with functioning facilities. We have gifted you with a library that the renovation was in the region of $67,000. We cost our, our book collection at $5,000 US per school, per school. The furniture and furnishings, we cost in the region anything between sixteen dollars to $25,000 EC dollars. If you're doing the math, you're realizing it's be past 100, all right? And, um, and we are very pleased that we can get, and the furnishings, of course, done by local, um, local um, craftsmen, also come in at, in the region of $16,000 to $20,000. We did the easiest first, those that, um, that were less problematic in terms of architecture and layout and so on. We didn't have to move too many sewer lines. We didn't have to physically um, call in too many engineers. The second half of the journey, because there are 52 primary schools, the second half of the journey may be a little more complex, maybe a little more taxing, but we're up for the game. We're up for the challenge. And we look forward, Mr. Prime Minister, in signing a third memorandum of understanding with the government of Grenada in the very near future. Accepting the library on behalf of the school, Principal Marlene Batiste promised that her school's performance will improve and the students will shine brighter within their communities. The gift of a library signifies a greater desire to strengthen the literacy development of our children by providing the enabling foundation to create a culture and a love for reading at our school. And it is for this that we say thank you for making our dream come true. Rest assured that your gift will not be squandered. We will utilize it and care for the library in the best way possible. Wednesday's ceremony was attended by permanent secretary Elvis Moraine, literacy coordinator Mrs. Natalie Pierre-Calise, and other representatives of the Ministry of Education, trustees Mr. Leo Gabbard and Lydon Ramdeni. Continuing the news, top performing athletes of Lee St. Joseph's Primary School who participated in the Ministry of Sports National Cross Country and the GUT St. George's Branch Cross Country were recognized and awarded on Wednesday. Adira Harris and Shady Belgrave received the award for top male and female athletes respectively and most disciplined athletes in the female and male categories were awarded to Anika Jones and Shady Belgrave. Parliamentary Representative for St. George's Southeast, Honorable Philip Tellesford, attended the ceremony and encouraged more students to participate in sports. He said the discipline gained from sports is a lifetime lesson that has significant benefits for future advancements. Participation in sports is something that is very important to your development as students. And as a matter of fact, the discipline that you, that you gain from participating in sports helps you throughout your entire life, throughout the entire journey of, of life. And so it is critical for, for you to participate in sports and to be disciplined in all that you do. He congratulated the athletes for a job well done and encouraged them to continue making their school proud. I want to congratulate you because you have set your, your body to the toil 
by way of training and preparation. And because of that, you are now able to reap the good fruits of your own sacrifice, hard work, labor, determination, and respect, and, and, and discipline. Continue to work hard, continue to persevere, continue to embrace discipline, continue to do well as we continue to build our country. This is The National Report. The news will continue after the break. Have you noticed an increase or decrease in your electricity bill? You know that changes in the fuel and non-fuel rates affect your bill. You should also be aware that changes in household activities affect your bill. Ask yourself these questions. Have the rates changed? Have there been more people at your home? Have your children been on holiday? Have you used your fan or air conditioning unit more often to beat the heat? Are any of your electrical appliances or equipment faulty? Have you added any new appliances such as transformers, water heaters, or pumps? Make it a habit to understand any changes on your electricity bill. For more factors that affect your bill, visit www.grenlec.com. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Welcome back. The Fire Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force is calling on the public to follow the necessary protocols for the use of fireworks during the Yuletide season. This is as the RGPF is concerned about the illegal importation of fireworks. These fireworks displays are usually packaged in barrels and other small packages. Sergeant Adrian Panchu, officer attached to the Fire Department of the RGPF, explained that anyone who wishes to engage in the business of import utilizing or transporting display fireworks must first obtain a license. In order to import any explosives under the Explosive Act, you're supposed to apply for a license and get a license so you can import those things. And then you have proper regulation for the storage of these items. And like we have licensed firework um, operators, so we have Spice Island Fireworks. And when they bring in the fireworks, it's actually stored at the police storeroom and when they have a fireworks to do they'll come and they'll get these ordinances and then set up their fireworks because it has to be stored under proper conditions yeah. however persons would illegally import these things in barrels and so forth and we're not just speaking about the fireworks you have the scratch bombs and those things mm -hmm. these things fall under explosives based on the definition of okay. uh, explosives so you're supposed to have a license to bring to import them in the first place according to sergeant panchu for public safety events with fireworks must be held under the supervision of an rgpf member let's imagine you get a license to bring in the fireworks mm -hmm. if you're going to set off these fireworks you have to ensure that you get someone who is licensed to execute the fireworks going off you apply for the permission to do it and in most instances someone from the special service unit would always be present and also we have to have someone from the fire department supervising mm -hmm. these fireworks going off we know at this period of time persons want to be grand they want they, you know mm -hmm. as you, you said earlier and the, the young persons are driving all around they want to be noticed so some mm -hmm. person want to set up fireworks mm -hmm. and so forth but you need to do it in the proper manner so you need to apply to the commissioner of police to have those the use of fireworks at events finally in the news grenada paralympic association held a knowledge enhancement work workshop for coaches on Wednesday aimed towards the inclusion and support of the physically challenged in sports. The session was held at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Chairman of the Paralympic Association, Ray Roberts, says though the local group is small, there are opportunities available for their participation in sports regionally and internationally. He challenged the coaches within the Ministry of Sports to make themselves available to help the physically challenged people in Grenada embrace the available opportunities. We are hoping working through the Ministry we can get the able-bodied coaches not just to work with able-bodied athletes but to be multi-skilled and hopefully help us to promote Paralympics. No doubt about it we have seen what People who are in some way maybe physically different to you, uh, let me put it in point blank, maybe paralyzed in some aspect of the, 
the physical structure. I had a polio, but I don't think it has in any way impaired my ability to do things that I wanted to do. So we hope that each one who is here with us this morning will see Paralympics as something that they can contribute to. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Sports, Norman Gilbert, says it is important that all athletes are catered for and identifying them at a young age is crucial for their development. It's critical that we ensure that we support the Paralympic Committee in their quest to ensure that there is effective coaching and talent identification when it comes to the issue of persons who are physically challenged. An Olympic medal is of equivalent value to a Paralympic medal, I'm sure. And so when Brother Robert spoke about our athletes who would have been able to participate at the Paralympics, we have one athlete, we have a swimmer, and I'm sure that we would be able to have somebody in track. But of course, that depends on the work that the coaches are doing to identify the prospective candidates. And therefore, it is important that you in your work recognize that we have to cater for all our athletes, especially at the school levels, where we are going to identify the key talents of those persons who are differently able. Representative of the Grenada Olympic Committee, Vida Victor Bruno, congratulated the Paralympic Association on this initiative and pledged their continued support to the association. She too challenged the coaches at the workshop to nurture the athletes that would be in their care to bring out their true potential. The parents have to deal with it, but you too, as the physical education teachers and the coaches are the one who have to care for them. A child tells the coach what he or she does not tell their parent. I want to remind you of that. That's what the child tells the coach. The child will tell the physical education teacher what they would not tell mommy or daddy. And therefore, you are such an important person. Your role is very important for the development of these athletes. I want to beg of you to find one. You don't have to find two. Just find one that you can nurture and you can work with. That story just ended the national report for Wednesday, November 23rd, recapping the top story. Grenada welcomes Caribbean Airlines' increased flight schedule to ease intra-regional travel from the end of November. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us.